I imagine that um, there's a big difference between what you'd like to see happen in Congress and what's realistic. Yeah, it's true. I mean, because the reality is the numbers, right? It's a numbers game. You've got to have 218 votes to move legislation that you want to pass. And, and as has been our experience in this Congress, because we only have the majority in the House, much of what we pass, in fact, almost all of what we pass, sits and collects dusk on, on Chuck Schumer's desk in the Senate. So it's a frustrating experience sometimes. It's frustrating to the American people because they, they want us to solve more of the problems, and we have the ideas to do it. But we currently don't always have the votes to do it. And, and that's, that's our concern, that's our frustration, and that's why, ironically, we're very hopeful because I believe the American people see that. I think they're gonna vote for solutions and I think we're gonna have a good November and we'll be in a very different position next year than we are right now. What makes you think that you're gonna get a much bigger margin or even gonna keep the House next November? Well, I've been all over the country. I mean, what, one of the jobs of the Speaker of the House is when we're not in session here, I'm pretty much always on the road. And so I think I've been to over 20 states in the last uh, several weeks uh, doing events for all of our, our my colleagues and our, our candidates that are challenging these seats that we're gonna flip uh, from, from Democrat to Republican. But everywhere I am, Greta, no matter where, whether it's out west, midwest, I mean, Long Island, deep south, it's the same exact energy in the base. I mean, people are energized and, and they're motivated. We're setting fundraising records on our side because even small dollar donations, I mean, the average online gift right now for our cause is about $12. But if somebody puts $10 in the game for the first time, they're motivated and they're gonna get their family to vote and their friends and the people they go to church with. And, that's gonna make a big difference on election day. I think people need a change and we're gonna provide that. If President Trump is reelected, you still, I mean, or, I mean, he's obviously gonna be the nominee most likely, you've still gotta pick up the independents and also the voters for Governor Nikki Haley. Yes, yes. And do you, I mean, the Governor Nikki Haley were probably votes not so much necessarily for her, but in some instances against President, former President Trump. There's probably some of that. It's not unusual. In a, in a difficult primary season for there to need to be a unification of the party after that. I think uh, President Trump's done a good job of that thus far. His, his speech the other night on Super Tuesday was, uh, I, I thought, the right tone. He's, he's talking about unifying and bringing people in, and, and I, I think they will. You look at the contrast on Election Day between President Trump and President Biden. I mean, it is a stark contrast, night and day. Everybody knows what President Trump can deliver because we did that. And, you know, after the first two years of his administration, we had the greatest economy in the history of the world, not, not just the US, ever. In every demographic, everybody was doing better. The, the world was safer. We were projecting you know, strength on the world stage, and so we were maintaining peace because of it. I mean, um, in terms of public policy, in terms of our, our standing around the globe, it was just a much different reality than we have right now. Right now, people are hurting, families are hurting. The inflation rate is like 17.9%. The, the average American household right now is having to spend $11,400 more annually just to make ends meet. And uh, you know, I think the debt in US households is at an all-time high. I mean, we're not on a sustainable trajectory. And of course, the border is wide open. We all know all the societal ills that are coming from that. Everything President Biden has touched has been a disaster. He has nothing to brag about. And, and so I think people are going to evaluate that at the end of the day. And I think, I think people will come home and they'll vote Republican. President Biden hasn't given a lot of interviews, um, so we haven't seen a lot of him. Tonight we'll get a chance to, to watch him you know, address the nation. Um, but um, have you been with him, you know, just to, you, or have you talked to him? I mean, have any sort of sense? Because we don't get, a, we don't get to see him on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I don't get to see him one-on-one -on -one very often. Um, in fact, for about six straight weeks, I requested a meeting with the Speaker of the House to meet with the President. I thought it was very important to talk about what he can and should do on the border, as well as um, you know, some highly classified national security matters. Uh, they wouldn't allow me to schedule that. They wouldn't allow me to meet with him, which is a little disconcerting. Um, in, the very, in the small handful of times that I have been with him, it's, it's rarely one-on-one. -on -one. We've only had two of those, and they were very brief. Uh, it's usually with a, a larger group, and um, you know, I, he just doesn't inspire confidence, right? I'm trying to be charitable about this, but I think everybody recognizes that, that Joe Biden, as an individual, is is not on his A game. He's not. He's not. He doesn't have the same level of, let's say, acumen that he did when he was the chair of the Judiciary Committee in the U.S. Senate. And it's not a slight against him personally. I mean, everybody ages differently, but um, you know, he's he's missing a step. You know, and and. We know that, we see it, and so do our adversaries. And that's why Russia and China and Iran and everybody else, North Korea around the country, are acting so provocatively because we are not, you know, 
Reagan reminded us we maintain peace through strength. We, we're not projecting strength right now. And so that invites aggression. And that's what we're seeing. 